This four steps have helped me to receive updates for my permanent residency and open work permit applications here in Canada. And I'll be sharing it in this video. So keep on watching. In my previous video about the timeline of my permanent residency and open work permit application, I have mentioned that, there is completely no progress in those applications, from January 2020 to November 2021. Not to mention that my official work permit expired on November 2019 which put me, into what they call an implied or maintained status in Canada. We'll talk about that further later. But main thing is, it has a lot of disadvantages. Then going back to our main topic, the four steps that I did to help my applications moved are the following. First, I contacted IRCC using the web form and telephone, multiple times. Second, I asked help from politicians, like the Minister of Parliament where you lived. Third, I joined several groups that I have found in social medias. And as a group, we seeked help from several advocates like nursing organizations in Canada, Minister Jenny Kwan, TNO and a lot more. And fourth, I filed stage 1 mandamus through a licensed paralegal in Canada. Before I further elaborate those four steps, let's quickly emphasize the implied or maintained status that I have said earlier. I have mentioned that it has a lot of disadvantages because 1. You cannot renew essential government services, like your health insurance and SIN number. 2. If your existing application with the IRCC will unfortunately be refused, then you will lose that implied or maintained status. Thus there is a great possibility that you will leave Canada. And you do not want that to happen. So my personal advice is, while waiting for the decision of your applications, do not depend only on being implied status. Secure your temporary status in Canada by renewing your work permit or visitor's permit. For work permit, ask your employer to apply for LMIA. Then to proceed. About web form and telephone follow-up in the IRCC. I provided in the description box, the link where you can access. The web form is easy to use, just type in the informations being asked, as well as your concerns. Similarly, it can be used not only for follow-up, but also in submitting documents relevant to your application. Like proofs of 24 months experience, letter of explanation and others. While for the telephone follow-up, just follow the automated instructions and choose which best describes your situation. Although sometimes, it's challenging to get into the queue. What I'm always doing is, calling at their opening hours which I believe is 8 a.m. Then for the second one. Asking help from politicians. Believe me when I say that out of my desperation before, I have emailed the highest officials in Canada to ask for help. But the best thing that worked for me is the designated member of parliament where I live. Her name is Honorable Yara. MP for Wilson and Keel. She is so kind and her staffs too, especially Sandra. Although, it might not be the same case for everyone. Because I have heard from my fellow caregivers, that for some, their MPS are not responding at all. Either way, to search for your MP, the link is also in description box of this video. I hope this step can help you too. Thirdly, fellow caregiver or nursing groups in social media. Following up in groups is one of the most helpful. For instance, for our group of foreign nurses who are licensed nurse in Canada but can't help with these pandemic due to our open work permits and PR decisions. Several national TV and radio programs feature our stories. And I believe it reached the immigration. 
Thanks to Mom Vilma of TNO. MP Jenny Kwan. Mom Doris of RNO. Carla, the acting leader of our group. And those who never hesitated to present their stories in national media. I think there are a lot of groups out there too, the best thing is to search it in the social media, like Facebook or now called Meta. And fourthly, I filed a mandamus stage 1 through a licensed paralegal in Canada. I am getting a lot of questions about this lately, so maybe I will try to come up for a separate video about it. But in general, it involves paying a professional fee and it has two stages I think. What I availed is the stage 1 only, which does not involve the federal court yet. And that are the four steps that helped my applications. Most importantly above these four is never stop praying and believing to God. Including his perfect timing and plans. He answered mine and by faith. He can answer yours too. That's all for this video. Do not forget to hit the subscribe and bell button. For more Canada immigration videos. Also, cheer me up by clicking the like button. And feel free to type in the comment section. God bless and keep safe.